Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here, Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Today's video is going to be a bird flu H5N1 human pathogenic avian influenza. We almost forgot the abbreviation. Um, but specifically in regards to animals, right? We've been talking a lot about human bird flu cases and we've certainly covered it a bunch of times. For those of you new to the channel, uh, we're a channel that does both medical education as well as medical news and kind of public health news. And we've done a ton of videos on bird flu. If you haven't checked them out, this is actually a, our bird flu playlist. Um, and you can find it linked in this video's description or you can go to our page and you can see we actually started covering bird flu about one year ago. And we've put out a ton of videos on bird flu since then. Uh, we've kind of been trying to keep up with kind of all the news and updates and those types of things. But we've been focusing a lot on humans. Today we're going to be talking about animals. We're going to talk about which animals have been infected with bird flu. And then we're going to oops, let us meet our computer, specifically focus on birds, dogs, and cats. Uh, we're going to talk about what symptoms they often have and all that good stuff. Um, for those of you new to the channel, again, we'd love for you to subscribe, hit the bell button, check out our other videos. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we do have what we consider a high-yield Patreon page where we do kind of frequent updates on all things medical news, public health, and medical education, uh, including early access to videos, practice questions, uh, blog posts, and all that good stuff. Uh, there's free membership as well as tiered membership linked in this video description, so we'd love, love, love for you to consider checking out our Patreon page. No further ado, though, quick 30-second break for the introduction. Don't go anywhere, then we'll dive into the video. Hey, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing. Hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high-yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial-free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety. All right, thanks for sticking around. Um, so bird flu, H5N1, symptoms in animals, particularly birds, dogs, and cats. Just to start, we wanted to go over what animals we've seen bird flu infection in. And it starts with the obvious things, right? It's called bird flu, and we've seen bird flu infections in birds. We've seen it in wild birds such as geese, swans, ducks. We've seen it in a lot of commercial poultry, right? Lots of chickens, um, both commercialized and kind of backyard flocks. We then saw back in early 2024, it jump into domesticated cows. And this was a huge jump because cows are mammals. And at the time, and there still is, there was lots of concern because the virus had obviously mutated to have a better ability to infect cows. And given that cows are mammals, they're closer to humans than birds are. So there's concern that it might be more able to jump into humans. And it's something we've talked about a lot of times on the channel, so definitely check out those other videos. All right, it then started to spread within cows and it's jumped into a handful of other mammals too. We've unfortunately seen mountain lion deaths, both in zoos and wild mountain lions. It's jumped into sea lions, bobcats, skunks, foxes, polar bears. We've seen it in alpacas. We've seen it in pigs. We'll just write these in, I suppose. Um, not a lot of spread in pigs, and we covered this because this is a really important one because pigs are what we call a mixing vessel because they can get infected by both bird viruses and human viruses. And sometimes those viruses can combine together to form, um, you know, we don't want to use the term super virus, but kind of super virus, a virus that has features of both bird flu and human flu, uh, and thus they can jump into humans more easily. Uh, not to be a broken record, but we covered that in one of our previous videos. If you have an interest, um, here it is, bird flu found in a pig, virologist voicing concerns so definitely check that out if you have an interest. Again, linked in the video's description. We've also seen bird flu jump into horses. And then a big one, one we have covered before, is that it's jumped into dogs and cats. Cats have been uh, a host for bird flu virus for quite some time. Again, more details in this video. But dogs, it's a lot more rare. It does happen, though. What we haven't covered is the symptoms that these animals get. We want to include this uh, nice little map. This is um, from the USDA, uh, and it looks at where some of these mammalian infections have been, right? And if you look on this side, you can see domestic cats are the black box. I'll just write that in case you can't see it, black box. And you can see ton of domestic cats in California, Pacific Northwest, uh, you know, somewhat Midwest. There's not much in the Southeast at all, right? There's a little kind of cluster here. There's not much in the Northeast either, and then there's not much, there's like uh, some in Michigan and some in the Midwest here, but not much in those kind of southern Midwest states. So really the cats that we're seeing infected are California and the West Coast, 
Pacific Northwest, kind of mid, middle of the country, some of the northern Midwest, uh, but not much otherwise. Um, they have seen it in bears, right, or the uh, yellow triangle. You can see a yellow triangle here, yellow triangle up here. You can see one on the east coast. Um, again, marine mammals. We talked about kind of sea lions. You can see a lot in the northeast here. Um, raccoons and rodents are blue and then white, and you can see the rodents, white, white, white. Um, you can see lots of raccoons in the Pacific Northwest are these blue circles, um, some of them in the southern Midwest, some of them in the northern Midwest. Um, so we've been seeing raccoons. You see, we've seen it in skunks, which is this pink circle. Um, and you can see a ton of the pink circle, kind of west, northwest, and middle of the country. These are all skunks with it. Um, some possums have been infected, which is orange. You see one of the orange circles here. Um, and then uh, there's been some canines right? Wild canine, they uh, specifically talk about, which is this gray diamond. Um, and we're going to maybe erase some of these because it's getting too hard to follow things. When we look for the gray diamonds, you can see tons of gray diamonds, right? These are all wild canine. Um, and you can see them in the Midwest here, all these gray diamonds up in Michigan, up in the Northeast, um, a little bit in the Pacific Northwest as well. Um, and then wild cats, and we talked about mountain lions and all those, um, are these purple squares. And you can see actually tons of purple squares right all over the place. So we are seeing it in a number of different mammals, um, kind of spread all over the place, um, with a particular focus on the cat populations, wild canine populations, and then some of these smaller kind of skunk, rodent, raccoon populations. But what symptoms could you expect, right? What if you have a pet bird, a pet cat, a pet dog? What symptoms could suggest that they have bird flu? Well, in birds, the symptoms are different than in cats and dogs, which they're similar between cats and dogs. In birds, many are asymptomatic. This has been one of the challenges with bird flu is because you can still spread the virus when your birds are asymptomatic. And then some birds go from asymptomatic just to sudden death. And people have seen, you know, birds dead on the sidewalk or kind of uh, dead in odd places where people are like, well, how do these birds die? And a lot of those are sudden death from bird flu. If your bird does develop symptoms, a lot of times it's generic symptoms, low energy, decreased appetite. You will sometimes see this purple discoloration or swelling of various body parts. Uh, a lot of people talk about the head. Um, so that would be something that could be a giveaway that the bird has bird flu. Many of them, if they um, have reduced egg production or misshapen eggs, this is why egg prices have gone through the absolute roof um, because a lot of domesticated birds have been cold or killed. Uh, and those that haven't been, um, if they do have bird flu, they don't produce good eggs anyways. Uh, you can see some of these kind of generic viral respiratory symptoms in birds, nasal discharge, coughing, sneezing. You can see some GI symptoms, diarrhea. And then the birds sometimes get kind of uh, uncoordinated. We wrote discoordination here. Actually, not sure in retrospect that that is a word, but they tend to get uncoordinated. Um, they could not have kind of their normal gait or have trouble navigating um, in kind of a, a normal way. So a lot of these are generic symptoms. The challenge is that many other viruses can cause these symptoms too. So this is not specific to bird flu, but these are symptoms consistent with possible bird flu and thus should be checked out. Cats and dogs tend to have similar symptoms. And remember, dogs... Getting bird flu is much more rare than cats, which, you know, we don't want to say common because it's not common, but it's more common than it is for dogs to get bird flu. And they get some things that are, are more uh, consistent with kind of humans when they have bird flu. So they'll get fevers, right? Lethargy or tiredness or drowsiness or no energy. They don't want to eat, right? They'll just be feeling, you know, if you think about if you're a human and you get the flu, you're kind of tired, you're fatigued, you have decreased appetite, you sometimes might have fevers. They also get conjunctivitis of the eyes, right? In our previous videos, we talked about how more than 90% of humans that have gotten bird flu get conjunctivitis or redness of the eyes. You know, pink eye um, is a description sometimes for these findings. So redness of the conjunctiva, the whites of the eyes. They then sometimes can get drainage from the eyes or drainage from the nose, runny nose, rhinorrhea. They can get pulmonary symptoms, lung symptoms like trouble breathing or increased work of breathing or dyspnea. And then this is an interesting one. And the what's quoted is neurologic features. Right? This is things like seizure or tremor, right? where you have kind of shaking extremities. Uh, and if we go to uh, the source of this, let's see, which one? 
I think it was here. Um, this is where we got a lot of this information, uh, so definitely check this out. Um, it's the American Veterinary Medical Association. And when they specified neurologic symptoms, they talked about incoordination, blindness, uh, seizures, tremors, all that type of stuff. And they've seen that in cats and dogs. They do mention, though, just like over here, that these are generic symptoms that can be lots of different viruses. They're not specific for bird flu, right? They want you to talk to your veterinarian if you notice these signs. Uh, several illicit signs are often encountered with common respiratory diseases in cats and dogs, though. So the vet veterinary would have to um, do testing to see if it was bird flu. All right. Um, they do say, though, that pets are at a much higher increased risk of getting bird flu if they've eaten a dead bird or other animal or consume unpasteurized cow's milk. For cats specifically, we've covered this, but the cats were getting bird flu from uh, cat food that had infected poultry in it. There's also suspicion that cats were getting bird flu from drinking raw milk from infected cows. And then there's also suspicion that some cats were getting bird flu from eating dead birds that had been infected. So, you know, obviously how you choose to raise your pet is up to you, but these would be three things that would put your pet at higher risk for getting something like bird flu. And if they have exposure to these things and then they're developing these symptoms, definitely something to be um, thoughtful about uh, and go see your veterinary uh, veterinarian uh, to get them tested or checked out. All right, hopefully that uh, was a little bit interesting or provided some additional insight or things to look out for for our lovely, lovely pets out there. Um, we'll keep you all updated as things evolve. Definitely subscribe, hit the bell button, check out those other videos, check out our Patreon page. We appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.